Okay, in this video I'm going to um, do a demo of one of our test games, but before I do that, I need to first go here and turn off the sound because <laughs> um, it's very loud and it'll be louder than my voice. <clears throat> you can turn that down when you're playing the game, but since I'm using the mic on my phone, it will overpower my voice. I'm going to talk a little bit while I have the screen open. You're probably wondering why she's starting on the screen. And the reason that I'm starting on the screen is because if I start any earlier, I'll re reveal the name of the game. And as you all should know, we cannot do that before the game is actually released in the store. <clears throat> so I want to talk a little bit about, um, this is one of two test games. So what is a test game? Um, when the candy game is released, that's not a test game, that's a regular game and it's ready to, to go and I'll go through that in, in a, another video, the details of that. A test game goes into the app, it says test next to it, okay? And what it is, is it's, it's allowing you the opportunity to, it's allowing the public to choose which games we turn into a tournament, okay? So we release a game that is a, of a popular genre, or it might even be a brand new game. Obviously, if it's a brand new game, we're not going to test it um, to see if it's popular, because we wouldn't make it if we didn't think that it was going to be popular. But in this particular uh, game, most games, there's, in, in the Android store, there's 1,400,000 apps and games, and the majority of them are games. Um, at least a billion of them. But if you go through them, they are essentially all the same game. There are very few original games out there. And the ones that are original are really not games for everybody. They're for a certain type of, of player. But the ones that are pretty much all the same in as far as operational function and stuff like that are ones that are that really anybody can play. Okay? Um, so we, we do the test games to see if our particular game is going to be popular. You know, if we have enough people that like it and play it and that sort of thing, then we say, okay, we're going to spend the extra money because to have it turned into a tournament game. If it's not, we just drop it. It just stays in the store and, you know, people play it if they want to play it, and if they don't, they don't, okay? But what this allows us to do is it allows people to actually be practicing on our own game. Um, that's one big reason to do it because we found that as we were doing the candy game everybody knew that it was a candy crush type game so everybody was going out either getting candy crush or something like that and playing on that and that doesn't make any sense that they're playing someone else's game to be able to play ours and another thing is while it'll give you a little bit of a you know advantage it really doesn't because it's only like it it's not the same okay and while the the sort of engine behind the game you know candy crush is just a knockoff of, of bejeweled there's there is literally thousands and thousands and thousands of games that are basic they're, they're match three whether it's bejeweled candy crush all of the King games are pretty much all exactly the same game. They just have different graphics. and But essentially, they play exactly the same way. So, um, but our game, while it may look like that, while our games may look like other games, they're actually very, very different. One, we take out any type of thing that's been programmed into the game to make it addictive. Um, I do not believe in making my games addictive. I want people to play them because they're fun, not because the game is designed to release certain chemicals in their brain that make them ad addicted to it to where they want to spend money. That's not my goal. I, I think that's totally unethical. So we've taken those types of things out of the game, um, out of any of our games. You know, you might say, well, this is like Candy Crush, but it doesn't have this and this and this. Well, it doesn't have that because those are things that make it addictive, that releases chemicals in your brain to make it addictive, and we just don't want to do that to people. Our games will be popular because they're fun and because you can win money, and that's enough, okay? It's not going to keep you from taking care of your children 
or make you lose your job or make you spend ludicrous amounts of money and those are all things that people do with Candy Crush um, and those types of games so we do not have any of those th things in our game um, another important thing because if you've been with us for a while, you know that our mission, what we're trying to do is we're trying to change the world. We're trying to make the world better. We're trying to empower the people to help people. So obviously giving them a chance to win money. So they're already playing games. We're just replacing the games they're playing with something that gives them the opportunity to win money. Um, and so they're not wasting their time um, playing a game, there's actually, um, you know, if you are playing a lot, you're probably going to win. Um, it's just a matter of time and the prizes are, are really big. So it can be, you know, it can be, um, not a waste of time, but actually something productive. Um, but there's, we do have psychological aspects and we do have things in our games that are designed to improve people, to help make them better. And like I said, you might first look at the game and go, well, this is just like this. But there are things about it that make it totally different. So in this genre of the game that I'm going to show you, you might say, okay, well, this is like this or this is like this or this is like this certain little things that are very subtle completely change the game. One is a game like this without a tournament um, actually makes you stupid. Okay? <laughs> it, it, it does. They make It, it makes you dumb. Um, and But this game is good for like um, staving off Alzheimer's and you know age-related diseases. Um, it's good for um, developing hand and eye coordination um, and just things that actually are very they they they're actually very very important and people don't don't um, realize how important these things are and I'll, let me give you an example um, if you put shoes on a baby's foot I know this sounds like I'm just going way off topic but bear with me if you put shoes on a baby's foot before the baby learns to walk, um, you know, most people do this, nearly everybody does this, not thinking about it, and they never really um, understand the consequences of it because they did it and because most people did it. But if you put shoes on a baby's feet before the baby's feet are developed because when they're born it's more cartilage than bone, um, the feet don't develop the way they would normally. The child doesn't learn to walk as quickly. Um, and I remember when I was little, they had these special shoes that were supposed to make your child um, walk better. They were, you know, learn to walk better, make them more stable. And in fact, they actually slow down the ability to walk. Um, but what that actually does is when the child is older, about eight, nine, ten, they don't have the same balance that a child who didn't have shoes, that never wore shoes except for booties before they could, before they could actually walk. Because <clears throat> the way a child, the foot acts very differently with a baby than it does with an adult. It kind of grips and uh, like a hand, it kind of like grips at the ground and that type of thing. So again, you don't really know the negative ramifications of things that you're doing if everyone's doing it, okay? So, um, so again, everybody plays the game, everybody gets stupider, nobody really notices, okay? Um, but certain aspects of these, of these games that you might not notice, and you, you probably will start to notice them once you play them, if you compared the two side, you know, this one to a game that, look similar um, and you paid really close attention you probably could notice the difference but at first glance you're just really not going to notice the difference so by playing a game that causes you to think and these don't cause you to think enough okay the normal ones don't cause you to think enough so like I said it really just kind of makes you stupid um, where this actually you know it stimulates the brain, helps the brain 
um, and that sort of thing. Um, so one of the things that that is an aspect of all of our all of our games is critical thinking. This is very very important. You know, a lot of, I know a lot of people believe in evolution, but the one proof that you know it's just a theory, but the one proof that it certainly isn't true is if it was if if evolution was the case, humans would have died out a long time ago because most people don't think critically. They just simply don't think critically. Where animals always think critically, you know, because they have to to survive. We don't need, you know, like we don't have to go hunt our own food. Most people, if they had to hunt their own food, they'd starve to death. Um, but society and the more, you know, the more advanced we get, you know, the more advanced society gets, the dumber people get. And that's just not good. It keeps people in a sort of a slave, slave um, status in life to where they can never go beyond, um, beyond where they're at. They're just stuck there. They've got to do that job because they can't do anything else because they've never developed those critical thinking skills which are really, really important. So part of our games is they develop um, uh, critical thinking but in a very simple way and it's kind of like um, if somebody has an accident and they um, get paralyzed and they can't feel below their waist, those muscles are going to atrophy and they're not going to going to um, work any, anymore and they're going to shrink and they're just not going to work anymore. And that, that happens with every single part of our body. For example, if you don't drink a, enough water, you're going to lose your natural thirst that keeps you, de that keeps you hydrated, that makes you drink enough. It's just going to atrophy. So where, so where drinking water becomes very, very hard for you and you just don't drink enough. Um, because again, that thing has atrophied. So um, with this type of critical thinking, it gets you started. And once you get started into the critical thinking, it kind of progresses on its own. You'll automatically start thinking more critically than what the games are developing in you okay so um, what would be what would be an example of that um, um, I'm sorry I didn't that's not what I meant to say if if I tried to use chess for example or say Texas Hold'em poker that's more of an, an advanced critical thinking and it'd be like jumping way ahead and it would leave most people behind. They'd never, if, if people just went out and, you know, said, okay, you need to play chess to develop your critical thinking, people just wouldn't because they're, they're so far away from where they need to be in order to start thinking in those terms, like chess or something like that, that they just, they just wouldn't do it. So the, the critical thinking that's involved in these games that we have, the way that it's set up, would work even on an even on a a, a toddler, okay? Um, as long as they had the hand and eye coordination to play the game, it would it would work on them and help develop that. And so that's what we want. It, it's one of the really important things that we want to do with our games. We want to make people. It's not people aren't smart enough. It's it's really not that they're not smart enough. They just don't think. And so what we want to do by dangling that carrot of that money, we're giving them a reason. We're giving them a reason. And then, like I said, the games itself uh, develop your critical thinking. So just playing the game without even realizing that it's there and that it's on, it's going to improve your critical thinking. So let me give you an example um, of the problem that people have. Okay, so I was at a meeting the other day, and... Um, I, I, I'm in a direct sales company and I had a person that I was introducing to the company who has, um, who has uh, diabetes, whatever the first level of diabetes is, and she can't have, um, no, she doesn't have diabetes, she's got insulin resistance. So um, the company sells these pills and this drink 
that um, if you take them together and you exercise, it will cause you to lose weight. And they have statistics on how much you can lose. Now, we're sitting at a table with two people who have been in the company for a really long time and make a lot of money. And um, my friend says to me, um, well, I don't want that one because it has honey in it. So, and I, I told her, I said, well, you don't need to take that one. You can take the one that I have because I also have in, insulin resistance. It doesn't have any sweeteners in it. And they both went, oh, no, 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 no. It's only for this one because that's what they were taught. They were taught by the company because the, the one that I take is brand new, okay? And it, basically it's an aloe drink and the one that I take doesn't have any sugar in it. It just has a peach flavoring and they make three different ones and uh, the first two are sweetened with honey and then they have this special kind of aloe in it. And then the one that I have has no sweetener but it actually has more aloe in it, okay? The right kind of aloe, the right quality of aloe will actually cause you to lose weight. And that's why you take it with the pills. So um, they're sitting there going, oh, no, 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 no. Because the company told them you have to take this one here and these pills and then you'll lose weight. Okay. And I'm sitting there trying, you know, trying to explain to my friend who's more intelligent than, than you know, is more capable of critical thinking than the two of them and she got it right away but they're arguing with me that it wouldn't make her lose weight and I'm like look the one with the peach flavoring has a lot more aloe in it it's got a lot more the concentration is 98 percent where those two are 90 the reason it's 90 is because the the how much honey they have to put in to sweeten it so, so if it works, if the pills and that work together with the honey, taking the honey out is not going to stop it from working because the ingredient that causes you to lose weight is actually the aloe and not the honey. But we sat there for a very long time and I couldn't get them to understand. And at the end they said, well, we'll have to check with the company. And it was just the most ludicrous thing that even when I spelled it out for them, they were not capable of thinking past what they had been taught. And this is not good for humanity. It's not good for anybody to have this type of mind where they can't be taught, well, they can't think past um, what they what they've been taught it it allows them to be controlled manipulated it keeps them in you know dead-end jobs and the really great thing is that we can help to change all that through these games so that's one of the benefit one of the benefits one of the things that we're trying to do you know we're trying to help um, the average people person normal people to have a better life in a fun way so, okay, so now what I'm going to show you is, and the reason I think I said this before, I don't know, I recorded this video more than once. Um, the reason I'm on the screen is because if I start any earlier than this, then I'm going to reveal the name of the game, which we don't do until the game is actually released. So here you've got these missions. You have to do these certain things, and when you complete them, you get coins for that, and you get coins while you're playing the game. Um... So let's talk about a strategy in, in this particular game. Let's just give an example. And everybody, because there's money involved, you're going to come up with your own strategy. But I'm just going to give you an example of a strategy, okay? Because what do you got to do? You got to beat everyone else. Or not everybody else, but you have to beat other people. Um, and so you're going to come up with your own strategy in how to do that. And it could be by being better than other people, but what if you're not better than other people? You can come up with a strategy to get around that. So in this particular game, as you're playing through the game, you get coins, okay? And there's a certain number of like, you know, uh, things that you get every time that the game starts. 
Well, a particular strategy would be for the tournament um, is that you play the game and play the game, get a whole bunch of coins, and then start out that game with a bunch of different rockets and a bunch of different things like that. And that gives you an advantage. You don't have to be as good as the other players. So again, everybody's going to come up with their own strategy in how to outplay the other players. And like I said, it's not like a chess thing. It's just a simple, you'll, you'll come up with it um, as, you're, as you're playing. And so those that are those that actually engage their brain um, can beat people who have better hand and eye coordination, um, for example. I'm going to go and um, s s first before I say this, before I start the game, um, I'm a terrible, terrible, terrible gamer. Um, I play games because I'm the type of person where my mind is going 24 hours a day and I can't just sit and do nothing. I just, I can't. So like if I'm waiting like for a doctor's appointment or waiting at the bank, I want to have, I want to have, um, I mean before smartphones came out I had little devices because I just can't stand, I can't stand waiting, okay? And like when I'm in a meeting, when I'm like, you know, programmers are briefing me and stuff like that, sometimes they're really, really boring. Um, and I can actually think better while I'm playing a game than to sit there and listen to them, solely listen to them, because if I do, my mind will wander. So if I keep that part of my mind that would wander doing something else, then I can stay on focus better. Sometimes I'm talking to somebody over Skype or WOW, and they just type really, really slow, and if I'm really, really busy, I'm going to get mad at them. That's what's going to end up happening. I'm going to get mad at them. And I don't want to get mad at them. So instead of sitting there waiting there, watching it going, type, they're typing or they're writing, I'll open a game and then I'll play the game. And then that way, when the little thing chimes, I can go and look at it and I don't get frustrated with the fact that they type so slow because I'm being, that's being distracted by the game. So that's why I play games. I'm not into them like a lot of people are. <clears throat> My son is so into games. Um, uh, I know how to um, design them. I know what's popular. I know what's uh, good. Um, I am, you know, for all intents and purposes, I'm a designer of a lot of different things. I've been consulting for 16 years, and that's pretty much me designing, telling somebody else what to do. And I still do that today only... It's my company instead of doing it for someone else's someone else so I tell them what I want the game to do I tell them what I want the graphics to look like they design it I don't have to be good at it I even have people who who are good at testing it and stuff like that however they can't do this video um, I have to do the video um, because they wouldn't know what to say they don't understand the company the, to the to the level that I do. They all have their own specific tasks that they're good at and this is mine. So um, I'm going to have to play this game several times just to give you a peek at it because I'm literally that bad at playing games. Okay, but um, I want to give you an ex a, a demo. Now this game is um, very close to they're just doing some final things implementing ads that sort of thing this is a you know as they make as they make the game they send me playable versions of the game and I go change this change that change this change that and then they do that and then they send me another one and and so this is one of those it's called an APK um, and that's what this is so I'm going to show you this game, this game play. I'm going to try to see the score 30. This shows you how bad I am at, at these games. And I don't want you to think when you're watching this, that, oh my God, that looks really hard. No, that's really how bad I suck. So, um, but let's go ahead and show you. Bigger ships, and I want that moment. And see, I should be shooting, but I'm not. I just want to 
<laughs> See? Oh, I got 120. If, if you've ever played these types of games, you can probably think of them out. It really does suck. Um, if you've never played them, you probably don't. You probably don't. So I need that shield. Okay, but I died on that. <laughs> okay, so um, we're gonna try again. So how this would be a tournament game is essentially where you're going to go and play through and essentially try to get the highest score for each level. Okay, so like I said, one strategy to do that would be. practice, get a whole bunch of coins, and then preload the game, I'll show you how to do that, that would be one strategy, where you wouldn't have to be better, I'm so bad, <laughs> okay, so. me look bad and stupid because I'll give it to somebody who's never even seen this type of game and they'll just you know get like a really high score compared to mine which is terrible. You can't really um, you can't you, you want to shoot the sub uh, but you don't have to you only have three rockets that you I do not have, see, I didn't get any points on it. That is bad. But like I said, I'm just going to You cannot really shoot the tank or any other side of the road. You just need to. You, you have to use the rockets to kill the sub or avoid the sub. You need to use the bullets for the other one because you don't have that many. So see, I'm getting better. Anything that you do, you will always get better at. Okay? You will always get better the more you do anything. So like I said, you can use a strategy for the tournament. Like I said, by getting a bunch of points firsthand before you go play in the tournament, then you can. So that, I need that. See, 
why I don't shoot. Okay. See, it's like I'm literally trying to get killed. Just crash. It's like I'm literally trying to ca cr crash into the stuff I'm not supposed to. I'm going out of my way to crash into them. that you want will stay there. challenged and I definitely am mentally challenged. I mean, you should be able to get the house. <laughs> I just don't have it. Magnet will suck up all the money, so that's a good thing. I'd love to show that. The lightning will give you more energy to keep going, and the shield.
to shoot that, but I can't shoot it because I don't have any more bullets left. So let's see. We go to the store. I can buy them here. So for five coins, I get one more rocket. You don't need a lot of those. The only thing that you would really want to use those is to take out the other sub. And then the bullets, you get ten for fifteen. So as I say, said, as you're playing through the game, this is how you de develop your strategy of you know, do I want to play a lot first and get them that way? You could just watch a whole bunch of videos. That would work, too. Um, you could practice to make sure that you're really good at manipulating things. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can strategize to beat other people. So um, so that's, that's a demo test. Um, this one, like I said, is almost ready to go into the stores. They're just finishing up some some final things, and um, see, so I completed the this particular level, so I get coins for that, and then you go from there. So the mission complete, um, and that's it. All right, thanks for watching.